Hey guys, welcome back to the garden. I figure I should do another garden tour because I got some news. While everybody else is doing videos about how to prepare your garden for winter, we did this. A greenhouse on top of the garden. All 17 by 24 feet of the garden is covered in a poly tunnel with PVC piping on top and wall extensions and some really cool uh, raising and lowering vents to keep, keep the humidity down. Anyway, let's take a look at the greenhouse, poly tunnel, high tunnel. It's actually a cold frame. Let's go with cold frame. Uh, let's take a look a little closer. Here we go. The late October garden tour and the first inside the new cold frame. We'll talk about the cold frame construction in a minute, but let's take a look about what's inside. Our eggplants are still producing. Look at the size of these guys down here. Still going great. These are standard black beauties. Then we've got the Lestada de Gandia in there as well. And on the other side of the peppers, of the, we've got peppers. We got lots of peppers still ripening. One, two, three big bells right there. Some smaller ones down in here. Those are black peppers. And then we've got the big red shepherd peppers in there as well. The nasturtiums are poking out everywhere. They're totally invasive, it's hilarious. Uh, here where we used to have strawberries, we now have beets coming in. These guys would be totally dead if it wasn't for the greenhouse. They are showing a little bit of frost damage, but those, the new leaves are coming in nice and fresh. Right next to the ventilation from the sides of the cold frame. So coming around, here's our tunnel. It's kind of starting to die out. Uh, but we're being totally invaded by nasturtiums and marigolds right now. It's great. This place is an overgrown jungle in October. I love it. So we still have tomatoes producing. We have some tomatoes dying, but we still have production on the tomatoes. We have leaves changing color on our blueberries and our cherry bushes. This is Grayson's garden box, which we brought in from outside, and it's bursting with head romaine lettuce, cut and come again romaine, and cut and come again, uh, baby spinach and another head of romaine over there. This is what's left of our huge sunflower. This was a lemon queen that got up to 13 feet tall, way over what would be encapsulated by the greenhouse. I chopped it down, but kept a few little ones to see how they would do and they're still going. So down here, we've got our overgrown raspberry. This is the second bearing of the ever bearing raspberry this year and it's still going. Uh, the greenhouse has allowed us to keep harvesting raspberries well into October and we'll probably still keep going for a few more weeks. I still get a bowl of raspberries for my cereal every other morning here. And by my cereal, I mean, of course, all the kids. The raspberries burst out of the T-bar and string system that I had going to keep them isolated in their box. Uh, so I'll have to think of something a little tougher for next year. But these guys have never produced more and it's all by virtue of uh, the warmth of the greenhouse. It's fantastic. Here we have the fruit trees. They are uh, bursting as well. I'm going to have to trim those down to keep them nice and small. Underneath here we've got the, the sage that is still growing. This is Bodie's garden box which still has tomatoes that are pushing out here. On this side we've got zinnias and our pear trees which are also growing nice and tall. We want to cut them down though to about here. Uh, to keep them at about five feet tall so they don't overtake the greenhouse. Here is Thea's garden box, which has a ton of new blossoms. Ever since we put on the greenhouse top, the little Tidy Treats tomato has been pushing out new blossoms and look at that, setting fruit. I don't know if that'll have time to actually ripen, but we'll see. Uh, we've got more head lettuce, we've got cut and come again lettuce, and we've got some black peppers in there as well all from Thea's little garden box, it's fantastic. Here's the broccoli. I planted six plants here about six weeks ago and I've already harvested three of them, one, two, and three. But I'm leaving them in here and nourishing them while these side buds grow because those will grow into a completely second harvest of, of broccoli heads, I can't wait. And then we've got the main heads still growing in on these other ones. They typically mature from this way to that way because the sun comes from back there. Over here we're doing Swiss chard for the first time. It's coming in nice and healthy. It's it's quite pest free. Uh, it had a little bit of frost damage, but we've remedied that with the greenhouse. And here is some mixed greens. We've got arugula and some beet greens in there and a giant random tomato plant. Uh, that I'm gonna see what happens there, but that's just a weed seed that sprouted. Over here we have our kale patch, which is still going strong. I clip it for smoothies almost every morning. 
We've got the white currants that are pretty well done for the season. And our red seedless table grape called Vanessa is starting to lose its leaves now in the winter, but it's nicely prepped for grape production next year. Here is the Himrod grape, which goes up there and then splits into two arms, uh, the cordons, and they have lost a lot of their leaves now and going dormant for the winter, and that's totally fine. This is a very healthy vine that goes way over here and we'll trim it somewhere around here uh, for grape production next season. And then of course we have our third one. This is the troll hog and grape, which works its way up here and then up and over the tunnel as well. Next year is grape production time for our three year plan for our new grape vines. So that'll be an exciting time. Here is the sweet 17 down to 15 because uh, we've taken out two vines. But as you can see, we still have lots of production happening. We've got lots of cherries that are still ripening. We've got this giant Amana orange. We've got nice big yellow Germans. Uh, we've got Cherokee purples. We've got indigo roses. We've got uh, perfectly round medium reds. Uh, so many awesome tomatoes still coming in and all because of this greenhouse. Oh, can't wait to talk about that more. Here is some new stuff that we planted uh, about six weeks ago. We've got a new yellow zucchinis on either end uh, that are getting a bit of powdery mildew. That's probably because of the humidity that gets trapped in the greenhouse, but we try and open up the sides as much as we can to get rid of that. If these are all different kinds of beets, three different kinds. Uh, we've got golden, we've got Detroit dark red, and we've got striped beets over here. That's pretty much it for what's going on inside the greenhouse. Let's talk about what's outside. So instead of getting into the greenhouse construction on this video, I thought I would switch it out into a different video. So if you like what you see here, give it a thumbs up down below and there'll either be a link up above or after this message to the video where I talk about all the different construction choices that we made and the materials and the design. Until next time, thanks for watching and this is Ryan from My Niagara Garden.